Welcome in this new series of video which will focus on genetic algorithm. The AI you see right in front of you learn by itself how to play the snake game. And in the following video, I will show you how I created this code and we will write everything down together. So let's get started. In order to work with the artificial intelligence, we will use a specific environment. And this environment is called Jim. To install Jim and all the different libraries I created here your first genetic algorithm installation, which is a notebook that will manage everything for you. So it will require Git, but you can still do everything manually. I would definitely recommend you, if you don't have it, install Git on your computer, because it's very useful. So the link is anyway in the description of the notebook if you don't have it installed. So once you have it, uh, type CMD, we take the address here, git clone, and you clone the repository. So what this will do, if you're not familiar with Git, is that it will just download everything in your folder, like you can see here, and you have here the notebook. We start Jupyter notebook, which will manage the Python code and execute it step by step. So you can follow everything you do at the same time and have a real feedback with your code, which is, I think, quite a good thing when you want to learn about Python. What you will use for this set of tutorials is a specific AI environment called Snakes, developed by Nicomon24. And uh, we will be able to use the baby snake environment. In order to do that, you just have to launch this and uh, all the Nicomon repository will be downloaded. The good part, like the one we will use, will be kept and installed in the folder so that we can use everything in a few lines of comments. And yes, to continue the installation, execute the second cell here, unless you're on Linux, in which case it will be that one. Once everything is installed right here, we will need to import our environment. Normally, snacks may take a bit more time if you never install Jim or Numpire or stuff like that. Once done, you just have to import Jim environment, which was developed by OpenAI, and also the Snakes environment, which was just installed. Once it is done, you can call the environment, so you have every time an environment name, with the command git.make, and you have here the environment. You will store it in a variable. What's very useful with Jim is that you can have a lot of different environment, which means you can find out if your strategy you're adopting is only working for a specific environment or if you really develop something which can work for a lot different. Because playing basketball is really different from playing football. It's exactly the same here. To change environment, you just have to change the name and it will create a new environment. And even you can propose this other kind, uh, like the Snake V1, that we may use uh, later in this video series. Once it is done, you have everything in the env variable. You can call env.reset in order to restart the environment. And this is what you will call a lot because your agent, or the AI that we call the agent, will run in the cliff and just bite his tail losing a lot of time and even if it gets the fruit you need to reset the environment because it is considered as you want i just call env.reset and i have this big table what does it represent in fact this is the environment you're working with as 100 you have here the tail 101 is the head and 255 is the fruit it must keep it's not very easy to look at and you can call a function called env.render which is just for humans and helps you to see really how your agent is working here. Once you have done that you can see that we will mainly need to collect the env.reset in a variable which we will do and this variable will be called observations. Every time you get information from the environment, it's called an observation. And you can check the size of it with dot shape because this is an empire array. Once you have done your observation, you will need to take actions. Actions are given by the env action space. 
if you have only one leg, you can move only one leg. If you have hundreds of robotic arms, you can move hundreds of robotic arms. So you will have a different possibility to do. And this is done through the env.action space. Yeah. So we can see here, it's a discrete variable taking up to four. So either zero, one, two, or three. This is the kind of action you can do in the game. It might not represent a lot of things and you may see, well, what is it? And we will see right after. What you must understand first is the difference between discrete and continuous variable. Discrete variables in when you have a choice, you only have one or two. You can take only gate one or gate two. If you have a continuous space, it means you can take everything between one and two. It could be, let's say, um, if you want to find the good pressure you should put on a pressure plate in order to activate a system, it could be even the weight of someone. It doesn't go from 35 kilo to 36 kilo. You have all the grams in between, which are the continuous space. And this is what is qualified by the discrete space. Once you have selected an action, let's say one, we will apply it to the environment. And to do it, we will call env.step and apply the one action. This will return a new observation state and also different kind of variables. This is a reward if the episode is finished and additional informations. If you look at what we have here compared to what we have, oh, yeah, we, uh, I will print the observation to, to make the difference. We can see that first we had the snake right here and the tail was here, the fruit here, and we see the head just moved on the right. So the tail get down and moves on the right, right here. And you can also see that our environment did not change. Why is that? Because we need to call every time f.render in order to show modification here. So if I call env.render, I will be able to find out that, yes, I have my snake going on the right. You will need to call different steps in order to solve the game. And if you look at what you have, we can definitely store what we have there in four different variables, which I will do right now. So we have first the observations, the reward. Next, we have if the episode is finished or not. So we will call it DOM, and this is a Boolean. And we have next the infos. And we can also reapply the step. We see our snake is moving. I apply step one again, and we see it's still moving on the right. Step one, two times, it will move two times on the right, and so on. At a certain point, you should also mention that your episode is finished. So right now it tells me it's not finished. I see where am I? Yeah, I'm right on the cliff, so next time, yeah, it told me I'm lost. And I should also see my reward is minus one because I felt in the cliff. Before ending this video, I would like to introduce a very nice function, which is called env.actionspade.sample, which will be used in order to create a random action you can do in the environment. And we will create a very small function, which will complete a full episode until it is finished using only random actions. To do it, I would store it in the act variable, and I will also use this act in the env.step function. I will store all the return from the env.step action because I need to know when the episode is finished. So if you remember correctly, this is done at the third variable return by the step function. I need to reset the environment, of course, and initialize done as false. While it is not done, I will run 
everything here. And if I run that, you won't see anything on the screen and it's normal. Why? Because we didn't call env.render. So we had it and we can see it moved just in the cliff. This was all for this gym introduction. Uh, I hope you like it and that you're more familiar with the environment. If you did not understand everything perfectly, uh, look on the GitHub because I will send the your first genetic algorithm solution, which will be used in order to have like a full detail with a very nice text. So you can really find out if you missed something. And if you have any other question, just ask them in the comment. In the next video, we'll build the neural network that will be used in order to create the genetic algorithm. Thanks for watching.